Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be discussing my April 2020 State of the Collection. As you can see, I currently have a two-piece collection. On the left we have my Tudor Black Bay and on the right we have my Seiko SKX 009. So the first thing I'm going to do is charge up the loom on both pieces to the absolute peak performance because I want to compare the loom on my Black Bay side by side with the loom on my Seiko SKX 009 so that you can compare the performance of a low tier piece and a mid tier piece respectively. So I'm using my 100 LED UV torch to charge up the loom and that will give it its absolute maximum peak performance. Now, loom is something that watch collectors often overlook when they're considering adding a piece to their collection. I think that that's a mistake. Often they just consider is the watch excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. But the loom is something they only consider after they've purchased the watch. Now, when I was considering adding the Black Bay and also my SKX009 to my collection, um, the loom performance was something that I looked for in YouTube videos when I was looking for reviews of both pieces. And I wanted to see pictures online just to see how brightly the loom glows. So as you can see, the loom on both my Black Bay and my SKX009 are both very impressive. I absolutely love the green tone of the loom on my Black Bay. I think it really does match the vintage aesthetic of the piece. The Rolex Submariner 6538, which this watch is clearly inspired from, is one of my personal Rolex Submariners of all time. I really like um, the one that Sean Connery wore as James Bond in Doctor No. And I really regard the Black Bay as a modern day reissue. It's like a 2020 reissue of that Rolex 6538 because it has the no crown guards case, the red triangle on the bezel and also the big crown. Now I also like the aesthetic of the SKX009 and I also like the bright um, tone of the loom. The Luma Brights really is equal in quality to the very best loom in the watchmaking industry. I regard it to be equal in quality to Swiss C3 Superluminova or alternatively Rolex Chromalite. As you can see it's glowing very brightly and the loom on my Black Bay and also my SKX009 will continue to glow for a good length of time. I really don't think there's any difference in performance although I would argue that the snowflake hands are more legible in low light conditions than the arrow hands used by Seiko on the SKX. So I really like the blue green tone of the SKX009 and I also like the green tone of my Black Bay. So I just wanted to show you them side by side because it's a video that I've never seen on YouTube. I've seen reviews of the SKX009 and the Black Bay respectively, but I've never seen the two watches side by side comparing the quality of the loom. So I'm just going to turn the light back on and then I will talk you through why I like both watches so much. So over the last 22 years, I've owned a lot of watches, and as I've discussed, um, my previous watch was a Rolex Submariner 114060. Now, two things I really disliked about the Submariner were the 20mm lug width and also the blue uh, chromolite loom. I think the square profile of the Submariner case really does spoil the aesthetic of it. And this is something I really liked about the Black Bay when I looked at videos on YouTube and also pictures of it online. I love the taper of the lugs and I like the 22mm lug width. The Oyster bracelet on the Black Bay tapers from 22 down to 18 at the flip lock clasp. Now on a Submariner, the Oyster bracelet tapers from 20mm down to 16. And I always felt that the 20mm bracelet was too slender on the Submariner supercase that Rolex should have scaled up the width of the lugs to 22 to better balance the head of the piece with the bracelet. And this is something I think that um, Tudor deserve credit for. I think that they've got the proportions of this 41mm Black Bay case absolutely done to perfection. I think it's a better looking piece. It's better executed in terms of its proportions than the Submariner Supercase. I also prefer the domed sapphire crystal with a nice lip above the uh, aluminium bezel inserts. I think the domed sapphire crystal is more aesthetically pleasing than the flat sapphire crystal that Rolex used in the Submariner with the Cyclops magnifier over the date complication. So overall I think it's a very well executed piece and I really do regard it as being like a 2020 modern day reissue of the Rolex 6538 Submariner. And the 6538 really is a personal favourite of mine. I like the one that uh, Sean Connery wore as James Bond in the film Doctor No. And it's just, it's just a shame that Rolex have never reissued the 6538 to modern day specifications. 
The other thing that I prefer about this black bay to my Submariner is the 70 hour power reserve of the movement. Um, I really like the in-house movement used in this piece and I really think it's a credit to Tudor's movement making capability that they can make a COSC certified chronometer movement. Um, this one's running at plus one second per day, which is actually more accurate than the Calibre 3130 in my Submariner, which ran at plus two seconds per day. So I would say to you, if you're considering buying a Rolex Submariner, really you should also consider buying a Tudor Black Bay because I actually regard it to be a more pleasing piece. This watch gives me more feel-good factor than my Submariner did and it's less expensive. So I actually think it's better to have a 70-hour piece rather than a 40-hour power reserve piece, sorry, 48-hour power reserve piece from the Calibre 3130 used in the Submariner. So a really good piece with excellent feel-good factor. Now with regards to my SKX009, this is an inexpensive watch to buy, although prices have risen since the watch was discontinued in 2009 and succeeded by the 5KX. But I really think that even though the prices have risen, um, I think that this watch represents outstanding quality and value at the respective price point. It's a low tier piece. And really the only negative of the SKX007 and SKX009 are the poor quality Rattley Jubilee bracelets that they come with. So by modifying the watch, by upgrading the bracelet to this uh, strap code Super J Louis, I have uh, solved that problem. It's now very aesthetically pleasing, but it's also very comfortable to wear and it's added some heft to the piece. It now feels like a more quality heavyweight dive watch. So I really like it. And I would say to you that if you're a collector looking for a low tier dive watch, the SKX009 really is a very satisfying piece to wear. The feel good factor of wearing this watch is outstanding and currently what I'm doing is I'm wearing both pieces in rotation on a daily basis. I wear both my Black Bay and uh, my SKX009 daily and that means I don't have to uh, manually wind uh, the Black Bay to top up the power reserve because it has a 70 hour power reserve as I've, as I've discussed. Now unfortunately the negative of the SKX009 is that uh, it doesn't have hand winding so one cannot top up the 40 hour power reserve but by wearing the two pieces daily in rotation for say 8 to 12 hours per day that is enough wearing of the watch to keep the movement the 7S26 charged up uh, to 40 hours power reserve so it never stops and that means I don't have to keep resetting the day date complication. So I would say to you, if you're a collector and you have a large collection of say 6, 9 or even 12 pieces, consider scaling down your collection to 2 or 3 pieces because I'm a great believer when it comes to watch collecting that less is more. I personally get more feel good factor just from owning two pieces and wearing the two pieces alternating them on a daily basis rather than having a larger collection of say six or nine watches in a watch box and only wearing the watches say one day per week. And I really like having the variety of a Jubilee bracelet piece in the SKX009 and an Oyster bracelet piece in the Black Bay. They're similar looking watches because they're both large pieces. The Black Bay is a 41mm case and the SKX009 is a 42.5mm case. And they both wear quite similar on the wrist. They have similar thicknesses. Now, the Black Bay is a thicker piece and um, I really like the aspect of the SKX009 having a flat um, hard lex crystal and uh, a flush aluminium bezel insert which fits flush to the uh, flat hard lex crystal. So the SKX wears quite low profile on the wrist. It has a relatively short 46 mm lug to lug measurement. So it does wrap around the wrist very well and slip easily underneath the shirt cuff. Now, I really like the articulation of that um, strap code Super J Louis Jubilee bracelet. The five links in the Jubilee bracelet are very flexible and it's a very comfortable piece to wear for long periods of time. So the perfect daily wear piece. Now with regards to my Black Bay, one thing I really like about the fit of it is the pivoted end links. As you can see, the solid end links actually pivot. So the first link in that rivet bracelet actually will move underneath the case. So it does have a satisfactory lug to lug measurement, but the point is that with the pivoted end links, if you have a smaller wrist, you will actually get a very tight, close fit to your wrist because they will suit a collector with a 6 to 7 inch wrist and they will also suit a collector with a 7 to 8 inch wrist like myself. 
So pivoted end links give a really good fit, even though this is a large piece at 41 millimeters, and it also is a very thick piece. Uh, it's nearly 16 millimeters tall. It's 15.5, including the dome sapphire crystal and the flat case back. So very aesthetically pleasing, but the only criticism is it's a rather thick piece, so it does wear with heft on the wrist. Personally, I like large pieces. I have an 8 inch wrist and I really feel that 39 or 40 millimeters is just too small. So I like the fact that this is a 41 and I also like the fact this is a 42.5 because I really feel that that is the sweet spot for me personally with an 8 inch wrist. I think that 41 or 42 or even 43 are really the perfect case sizes. So I like the heft, I like the extra heft of having this on the uh, strap code Super J Louis. And I also like the heft of having this on a solid oyster bracelet with the rivet links. Um, they really are very aesthetically pleasing. Now with regards to the aluminium bezel inserts, it's often the case that collectors dislike the Black Bay and also the SKX009 because of the aluminium bezel inserts. And they're not as scratch resistant, they're softer than ceramic for example or sapphire. And that's something they often do. They often upgrade, they modify the SKX009 with either a ceramic bezel insert or a loom sapphire bezel insert because both sapphire and um, ceramic are more scratch resistant, so it's more practical. But I actually like the more vintage aesthetic of the metallic tone of the Pepsi bezel on my SKX009 and the matte finish of the aluminium bezel inserts on my Black Bay. On the Submariner, the pre-ceramic, the 16610 and the 14060M, the aluminium bezel insert has a more glossy look to the black paint on the aluminium. It's actually more reflective. And I've previously owned a 16610 and also a 14060M. And it's something I disliked about it. I like aluminium bezel inserts because they give a dive piece of vintage aesthetic, but I dislike when the black paint is very high gloss and very reflective because I just think it looks cheap. Now what I like about this Black Bay is that it's a very matte look, almost like ceramic. It's not as reflective due to that matte finish. And I also like the subtle red triangle around the loom pip on the bezel inserts, which is like the Rolex 6538 Submariner. And it just really complements um, the piece. And I like the, it's like a dark grey rather than pure black, uh, jet black uh, dial. And uh, I think it contrasts beautifully with the gilt text on the dial and also the gilt chapter ring and applied indices. So overall, I think that this is a very well done watch. Um, is there anything I dislike about it? No, uh, I think that um, it's just the perfect watch. Some collectors are critical of the thickness. Personally, I like it. I like a watch to have slab sides and I like heft. I like a tall piece with a domed crystal to sit proud on the wrist. I don't have a problem with it. So there is nothing whatsoever I would change about this piece. And I think that that's the reason why I get such good feel good factor from it. I just think that it's the perfect watch. And I actually would prefer it. If you offered me a Rolex Submariner or a Black Bay at even money, I would actually favour the Black Bay because it's just a better looking watch. Now, with regards to the SKX009, are there any negatives to it? Well, yes, there are. A popular upgrade for this is the 7S26 um, to upgrade it to an NH36A, which gives hand winding and hacking. The NH36A is the same as the 4R36 used in the Seiko Turtle, for example. And that is a worthwhile upgrade. It is worthwhile um, getting hand winding and hacking. It's something I've actually considered doing myself because I do miss not being able to hand wind and hack the watch. I like to be able to set the time precisely to the second and also like to be able to top up the power reserve manually by winding the crown. So that is the main drawback of this watch because it was made from 1996. Uh, it used the same 7S26 that was popular in the Seiko 5s from that period. So it's a shame that over the years Seiko didn't upgrade the movements um, to the NH36A. They did, of course, upgrade the movements in the Seiko 5KX, which is its successor to the 4R36, which is effectively the same movement. So that does have hand winding and hacking. But uh, apart from that, there's nothing I would change about it. I like the iconic aspects of the SKX009, such as the Pepsi bezel and uh, the crown at four o'clock. It really is one of the most instantly recognizable Seiko pieces. And it's highly collectible now that it's been discontinued um, since the 5KX succeeded it. 
So I would say to you, um, have no uh, reservations whatsoever about adding either an SKX007 or SKX009 to your personal collection, but do factor in the cost of adding a strap code bracelet. Um, the Super J Louis that you're looking at here is an excellent quality bracelet as I've discussed in my review. I really like the heft of it and just the tool watch aesthetic of it. I think it's a very uh, pleasing bracelet. So overall, which do I prefer of the two watches? Well, it's clearly the Black Bay because um, there's nothing I would change about it. The SKX009 really is a very good watch, but I really feel the lack of the hand winding and hacking lets the watch down. So for that reason, I prefer the 70 hour power reserve of the Black Bay because it does have hand winding and hacking. It's a better quality movement because it's in house. Um, the 7S26 really is an outdated movement, but it is a very reliable, well proven workhorse movement that isn't going to let you down. So two very satisfying pieces with outstanding feel-good factor and two very different price points. This is a mid-tier piece and this is a low-tier piece. But I would say to you, if you don't have these in your collection, consider adding them to your collection because you will find that they give outstanding feel-good factor. I feel that these watches meet both of my criteria of being excellent quality and excellent value. And lastly, I will say, as I showed you at the start of this comparison review, the loom on both these pieces is absolutely outstanding. I think that you won't be disappointed with the Black Bay loom and you won't be disappointed with the Luma Brights used on the SKX009. Very good quality loom. So I hope you've liked my discussion of my uh, April 2020 state of the collection. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.